Welcome to the proverbial house of fun, boys and girls. My name is Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'm often referred to as the magic content creating equivalent of Nicolas Cage on a cupcake flying through space. Originally I had a legacy death and taxes video planned for this weekend after an anonymous benefactor, also known as Sugar Daddy 69 donated Richard and Ports to me. I will go into more detail about this fucking incredible interaction from the community in my actual death and taxes video, but MTGO replay functions bug out whenever I play Revoker, um, so I essentially don't have the footage to make the video this weekend. I need to record whilst playing the league, not using the replays. I kind of just assumed the bugs I've had in the past would have been resolved by now, but it seems to be an ongoing issue. MTGO is still a fucking joke. So instead I decided to park the white weenies for a moment and shimmy around the club high a little into everyone's favourite tribe, the raging red weenies goblins. Goblins might get a couple of features on the channel over the coming months because A, I now have ports so I can play them in Legacy, and B, they're fucking hilarious at times. So what we have here is a Krenko commander deck. Krenko is the most formidable mob boss in all the multiverse. When he isn't recruiting scores of goblins to fight for his cause or wrecking fools, he enjoys nights in watching Orange is the New Black on Netflix and long walks in the romantic backstreet red light districts of Ravnica. His favourite food is spiced kippers and his favourite movie is The Hunt for Red October. This deck is an absolute shit show at the moment, I used to put in every legacy, modern and vintage legal gobbo that I had on MTGO after buying the legacy version of the deck, and then added synergistic staples like Skull Clamp, Illusionist Braces, Perforos, and Impact Tremors. Spicier cards include Helm of Possession, Slate of Ancestry, and this old boy Martin Stormgold, who's an absolute house. Of course, the Sound of the Dragons made it because, well, I need to make this card spike somehow. I'll put a deck list below, but feel free to drop me suggestions in the comments below about how to refine the list, as this is a rough pile of quickly put together shite for funsies. Right, Gobbos, let's get them. 1v1 Commander is a fickle mistress, best of one games and no sideboard forces your deck to pay mainboard answers to things. Or in our case, mainboard goblins that do goblin things in a goblin way. We find ourselves up against Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. I really want to build a Selvala deck myself, but I would of course go green-white because white is the best colour in Magic. No, seriously, it has the best removal, best weenies, best tutor, best card draw. White weenies for life! But enough of that, today is all about our favourite little red runs. We have an opening hand with just one singular gobbler in it, but it's a sweet gobbler nonetheless, and we can always just play Krenko. So, it has ramp, and it has a skull clamp, which is banned in pretty much every format everywhere, so it's gotta be good, right? Our opponent opens with a rather strong line of Mox Diamond Forest into Boreal Druid and Findhorn Elves, which makes me think he might be actually playing Elf Tribal if he's playing Boreal over, say, a Birds of Paradise. We untap and play a skull clamp. In spite of his silly opening turn, some might argue our opener is stronger. You've got to ask yourself the question. Do you even clamp, bro? In the second main phase, he plays the legendary pump land from Kamigara and plays Selvala. He then plays the rather redundant Carpet of Flowers. In all fairness, with the omnipresent threat of Boral in these leagues, Carpet doesn't seem too bad as a mainboard card for that. However, he now has only one card in hand, a bunch of elves, and that card was basically dead against me. We untap and deploy some ramp with a Mind Stone and pray to hit our land drop next turn. He gets all up in my grill with an aggressive plunge, he pumps Selvala and really turns out the pressure by hitting me for five. Looks like he doesn't have much gas left, or the soul card in his hand is very, very expensive, or perhaps situational. We untap and miss a land drop, which is awkward, but don't worry, in clamp we can trust. We cast dragon fodder and then clamp one of them, essentially grinding a poor little goblin into a valuetastic paste. Silent Green is people! The valley takes the shape of two freshly drawn cards at the top, including a soul land. That's number wang. We could clamp again, but with little mana to actually make use of the cards we draw out to hold off and keep the blocker up. He plays a moss wall bridge, hiding something under it, and then he swings with his big Savala, deciding that trading a valuable mana dork for a gobbo token is probably a bad idea. We untap and draw another land, I decide to take the turn to play a helm of possession and use my mana to steal Savala. This is a minor punt because at this stage I thought I could untap next turn and use Savala to make out of mana after playing a Krenko. I did not realise that I actually needed a single green mana to activate her. The upside is that I am reducing the amount of mana that he has available next turn. He untaps and casts an entwined tooth and nail, which is lucky as Savala would put him dangerously close to entwining it. He grabs my homeboy wooden bellower and a rather scary looking world breaker. You leave my precious skull camp alone, you old drazi shit. I untap and cast Krenko, draw a card off Savala's trigger, then realise two rather important truths. Firstly, the Goblin King in my hand doesn't give haste and is thus a bit of a shit inclusion in the deck, and that's a 
Zavala needs a green mana to activate. Fuck. Silver Lining though, I drew Impact Tremors, the greatest red enchantment ever printed. If I'm honest, it is practically Splinter Twin. I slam a pile driver and smack him with Zavala, and he casts a World Breaker in his turn. I fear my Clamp or Soul Land aren't long for this world and are about to bite the dust, but instead he opts to kill my helm and take back Silvana, maybe because he's gearing up for more mana for a reason. I'm okay with this. I play my beloved Impact Tremors and then Holding Outburst. Pew pew pew! Cup of tea, number three damage to use the British bingo slang. Tapping Cranko, we make another five gobos. Pew pew pew! Man alive, number five to again use bingo slang. I grind one more gobo into more cards with Clamp and hit my land drop for the turn. I realise I put Secret Records in the deck instead of Mirror Pool, which is a bit of a herp derp moment. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I Clamp again and find Goblin Grenade and an answer for the Moss Rock Bridge if needed. He plays a Bellower, fetching a Fierce Empath, which then fetches an Emrakul and puts it down to his hand. Next turn I may be in trouble, as he'll be able to cast the Emrakul, draw some, a card and make a lot of mana. He taps Savannah, makes 6 mana at the moment and casts the Mono Green Bear Puncher himself, Surak. I think Surak is high up on the contest of double R bastards in Magic. That list also includes Rafik of the Many for riding at the Apocalypse Hydra like an absolute badass, and, and Gideon. Though Gideon's a spark is a bit unfair, so maybe he shouldn't make the list. Of course, Elspeth makes the list as well for killing gods with a stick. He then plays a Sylvan Library as if he could possibly help him against the coming storm. He swings for some damage, quite a bit actually, but we are left alive and that's his final mistake. Krenko summons eight more goblins and shoots our opponent for what was known colloquially as a Garden Gate. We then live the metaphorical dream as we cast a shit pile all star to send the dragons and turn every fucking goblin in the place into a dragon. And then, after a moment of hesitation, I said, fuck it, he can have dragons too. Your dragon, your dragon, your dragon, your dragon, you're all dragons, dragons for everyone. Impact Tremors trigger 16 more times, dealing what is known as a sweet 16 in the British bingo terminology. Which is kind of creepy actually. GG, get wrecked, scrub! And that's it, it's a win, it's best of one. I hope you enjoy the video, I have Legacy Death and Taxes League coming soon, some more mini cube this week, and a new Baptist brew a little bit later down the line as well. Um, if you want to meet up with me in Birmingham, just let me know, come say hi when I'm in Birmingham in a couple of weeks time, I'll be there on day two slash three, that's the Sunday, I'll be there on Sunday. Um, keep your eyes peeled for the content, I'll be announcing plans around streaming soon as well, so again, keep your ear to the ground and your penis in your hand. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell to get email notifications when I upload my content. I upload big gameplay videos every other weekend as a minimum. What comes in between those videos is an assortment of clusterfuckery and silliness from vlogs, to news dumps, to live paper gameplay. Drop me a comment if you enjoyed the video or have any ideas how to improve the deck or anything you want to see on the channel in the future. Follow me on Instagram for pictures of my food and my dog, Twitter for banter and deck discussion, and on the Facebook page for memes, sneak peeks, and just general discussion pieces. And lastly, share the video if you get a chance. The more people that see this, the more powerful I grow, like some egotistical, inflatable, bearded man-child. Feed me!